Hello. How's everybody doing? How's things? How's life? How's the universe? How has your week been? Move those. Yes, hello. How is everybody doing? How's things? We should be going live. All good. Sorted. Hello. How's things? Um, hello, John. How you doing? Uh, gonna be responsible and make dinner at least. I uh, heard you're supposed to eat every day. I know. Crazy. Uh, how are you, Doctor? I hope you're well. Um, well, thank you very much for the uh, the doctorate, um, honorary as it may be. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm. Uh, yeah, meh. How are you? How is everybody? How are the four people who are currently watching? How are the two people that are currently watching? Um, how's things? Uh, hello, Steve. How you doing? How's things? Hello, Simon. How you doing? How's uh, how has your week been? Also, what have I been up to this week? I mean, having several breakdowns, that's probably one thing. I did a bit of programming. Yeah. Um, on the old uh, latency tool. I have, uh, I have the proper cases uh, on their way. I'm not sure how well they'll go. I might need to um, modify the PCB a little bit to enlarge the holes to then make things work, but we'll see. Um, uh, <laughs> John, uh, the doctor is well deserved. Let's say doctor of pissing off uh, motherboard companies. <laughs> oh, I keep doing that. Oh, <laughs> uh, um, hello, Ish. How's things? Uh, don't worry. I am uh, very, very used to the thing that. Uh, also, do we call masking? Um, <laughs> making meatloaf uh, want me to save you a piece. I'm good. I just uh, I just had nachos, but um, you you enjoy it. <laughs> I don't know that I've ever had meatloaf. Like, I mean, I've had things that you could probably call meatloaf, like. A, Beef Wellington, <laughs> but uh, I don't think I've had something expressly called meatloaf. Oh yeah, pretending everything is fine. Yeah, pretty much. That's um, that's how this whole like society thing works. So you kind of have to get good at that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> pairs well with an imperial IPA. <laughs> Look, I'm Slavic. Everything has meat in it. <laughs> yeah, fair. <laughs> I think my, uh, my my good friend is uh, is Bulgarian, and uh, yeah, yes, he he would probably agree with you. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm with the the latency tool. Since I'm thinking about it, uh, I I'm trying to do some fancy things. So uh, as you probably know, I have Nvidia's LDAT. I've had it for ages. Um, and this it it does have some really cool features really useful things um the the catch is that it's still relatively uh sort of generic and kind of uh almost basic to a degree um and basically all this gives you is a end-to-end -end latency figure which while useful on an individual setup perspective, like if you had one of these, you could tweak your in-game settings, you could uh, change peripherals, you could, you know, whatever you want to do to reduce that latency. That is a very valid use, but for reviewers or for people who want to test things, uh, like test and review things like mice, keyboards, even headsets and audio, uh, it, it does give you useful measurements as long as you're directly comparing, as long as you're using the exact same test setup, the exact same, you know, whatever. Um, but ideally, you would be just testing the device itself. And there are a load of ways that you could do that. 
the most uh, sort of dedicated way, especially for peripherals, is to have a USB packet sniffer that is listening to the USB packets and waiting for that click uh, packet to be registered. And if that click packet is registered, then uh, you compare that to, you know, audio or a, uh, uh, like you've sold up some wires on whatever. Um, and that's, uh, that would be the best thing, but USB packet sniffers are really expensive. <laughs> um, so failing that, uh, this at some point when I get around to coding it, uh, will pre-test your system. So you, you know, strap it to your screen like normal, you press, uh, you know, you press the start test button, whatever, you press the button on it, and then it goes and pre-tests your system. And then it will say, cool, we're gonna use the mic now, or whatever you selected, and you can now, you know, make key clicking sounds, and then it will uh, take the results from, you know, your, your mouse, whatever, and then subtract what the system's latency is to give you a peripheral specific latency which is way more useful um so uh yeah it's it's gonna be a pain in the ass to write that um and the user experience is something like that's the that's probably the more difficult part is making the like how you use the thing uh okay because that's a multi-stage process and that's difficult to like get people to do so um we'll have to see how that works but it is one of the main things that i want to do sort of post getting the thing working in general so yeah uh working in tourism tour, tour, tourism the biggest cringe moment is when people uh, come here and ask about the vegetarian cuisine. <laughs> Much face palm, very wrong part of the world. Uh, not that there is anything wrong with it. Yes. Um, well, I, it, it feels very much like a relatively sort of Western thing to be fully vegetarian or vegan. Um, I know that when I've gone to uh, Taiwan twice now, uh, pretty much every single meal that I had, had some form of meat in it, whether that's fish or whether that's, um, you know, whatever, uh, land animals. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like, I think, what was it? I, I, I when I stayed in Taipei for Computex, with MSI laptops specifically actually um the the hotel that I was in uh the like breakfast was a restaurant a couple doors down and so we'd go there uh and you know have breakfast and the breakfast was uh, like sticky rice and then like it was either bacon or pork or something uh or beef um you know whatever at just for breakfast <laughs> um so yeah they have a different uh part of the world um hello commander classified how you doing see i remember <laughs> hello joe how are you how's things uh anything interesting happen in the world of tech even if it's a niche and you find it interesting um off the top of my head i'm not sure uh Simon, uh, no, no, I'm not. Um, while I would quite like to, um, I I make about enough money to cover my own expenses, like living expenses, kind of. Um, I can't really afford multiple thousands to go to a trip that everyone else is already covering better than I would anyway, uh, and doesn't. It's not like, you know, I go, I'm going to a, a place, like a, a show or something where I'm going to be, you know, networking, making lots of connections, and then I'm going to, you know, earn lots of money from that. Uh, so it, it it would mostly be me going for the interest of going. Um, and that's, I, I, I already can't afford to, like, just go on holiday, let alone, <laughs> let 
fly to the other side of the road. <laughs> um, and uh, since you may or may not ask about sponsors, uh, in, in theory, yes. In practice, uh, most UK um, like marketing people uh, are mostly responsible for UK only marketing. And so they would have no reason to send me to Taipei to cover Computex uh, because they would want that to come out of their HQ's budget, but their HQ wouldn't give them any money for that. So, uh, yeah, no. <laughs> Obviously, it's not impossible for me to do or anything, um, and you know I've gone to Taipei twice before, but um, it it's not something that I would have uh, uh, the easiest time in in arranging. Um, and I'm not well in a lot of ways, including uh, I, I I don't like talking to people anymore, uh, which makes <laughs> Talking to Martin people hard. Um, yeah. Holiday, what's that? Wouldn't know, mate. Uh, can we petition MSI to reform the Dragon Squad and send you there all over again? <laughs> oh, God. Um, how's it going? Uh, hello, Liam. Um, long time. Uh, wondering if you give me some advice on power supply for a new build. Is an ATX 3.0 power supply needed? Uh, uh, is an ATX 3.0 power supply really needed, or would an H1000i be good enough for a 7800 uh, 7, X3D and a 4080? Uh, 4080 with a GPU cable from CableMod. Um, as a general, I wouldn't be that that bothered. Um, the having a direct connection, or I mean, I'm pretty sure that. Uh, someone like CableMod will sell you a direct cable, like to the uh, 16 pin from Corsair's power supply. So if you have a direct cable that doesn't need a, um, uh, you know, an adapter built into it, uh, if that's the case, then um, I would say get whatever you want, including the H1 uh, 1000i um, or HX 1000i, uh, because. I mean, if you can't get a cable that goes directly and you need an adapter, then maybe I would think about it. But also, I'm, I'm relatively sure that Corsair will also sell you either included or as an optional extra a cable that goes directly from their power supply connections to the uh, 16 pin. So, um, yeah, I wouldn't be that bothered. I would probably care more about the... Uh, you know the the rating like the AE plus rating is it um gold platinum or titanium or whatever they are um also hello zig how you doing man how's things or sarah make the 16 pin to two eight pin uh for series four per spice that'd be saying um but yeah fair uh, Wendell posted a video this morning about the AMD MI25 and using them for machine learning. 16 gig of HBM2 for about $100 on eBay. Damn, that is impressive. I mean, uh, ironically or somewhat annoyingly, 16 gigs isn't all that much in terms of VRAM now, but the fact that it's HBM2 is a pretty big deal, so... Damn, sweet. Not a bad card. <clears throat> Um, if I did more stuff with, like, training machine learning, I would consider it. My, um, my t-shirt is, uh, aggravating my armpit today. Uh, Ambition Z, uh, upgrade path in the uh, i9-9900K, currently paired with a 3090, uh, 32 gigs of 3600 MHz. Um, so... To go from the the 9900K uh, to to something uh, you know worthwhile of a jump, you would probably be going. I mean, I don't think you can use the same motherboard anyway. So 
because uh, it was ninth and then it was 10th and 11th and then 12th and 13th are, are the pairs so uh yeah i would probably say it, it depends what your preferences are and whatnot but um the 7800x 3d might be a very interesting shout you will need to uh swap your ram which is a downside but you're already gonna have to get a new motherboard anyway maybe um other than that uh the what was it? Were we on twelfth? The ten nine hundred K was a mess. <laughs> the eleven hundred K was worse. <laughs> the twelve hundred K is, I guess, better. Uh, and then the thirty nine hundred K is, I also guess, better. Um, but all of those chips need a new cooler. They need a three sixty mil rad at least. Um, so you are talking about quite the expensive upgrade, <laughs> uh, whereas the nah, uh, like a 7800X 3D is, uh, while you do need to pay for, uh, for new RAM compared to potentially still using your existing kit, um, on actually any of those Intel chips, which is kind of impressive, although you will need to buy a DDR4 board for the 12th and 13th gens. You probably won't, well, you, you might need to change your cooler. Oh no, AM4 is still out and AM5 uses the same mounting hardware. So it's fine, yeah. yeah. Maybe. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, my, my short answer is maybe take a look at the 7800X 3D. Uh, you're gonna have some compromises, otherwise, you might actually be better off with like the 13700K if you're going to stay with Intel. Um, because you still get more cores, a lot more performance overall, uh, but you don't necessarily have the immediate chip dying from heat <laughs> levels of, uh, of heat output. You still need a pretty boss cooler, but then again, for the 9900K, you kind of did anyway, so... Possible option. <laughs> Ish getting snarky in the comments. <laughs> so the 17th pin in the uh, in the 16 pin connector is for uh, fire detection. <laughs> um. If I keep losing the weight, I'll finally be able to buy some of your merch that will actually fit me. <laughs> I'm sorry, Joe. Um, but, I mean, congratulations, you're doing an amazing job. That is, uh, that is one hell of a feat. Um, that's a nice patina on that white shirt. <laughs> I, to, to some degree, it is just because the material is, is a different um like blend and whatever and putting the two right next to each other ain't helping but partially it is because it's a bit older although it has been washed relatively relatively recently um and liam you can get th uh, 3x uh 8 to 16 pin cable for uh for the power supply and the hx 1000i is platinum nice um, been looking at ATX 3.0 power supplies, but not really very good stock, uh, very expensive and mixed reviews. Yeah, that's what I, that's why I would probably, uh, stick with, uh, you know, a standard power supply as, as we might call it these days, um, for the time being, uh, because I don't think that there's a significant benefit to, you know, current systems, even the a 16 pinned GPU system when you can just get cables or worst case adapters um, to make the rest work. Um what was I going to say? Oh, a broken oval chair. <laughs> um, uh, it's not not majorly. Uh, this is actually the replacement one, but um, 
the right side bolster i sit i i sit in really weird positions right now i have my left leg up and tucked under my right leg um and then my right leg is on my little uh but still um so uh it's sort of crushing the front right corner anyway um the the support in uh the, the metal support inside has become detached uh and so it makes a bit of a clunky noise when you uh when you lean on it uh, it's still pretty rigid though, which is kind of surprising. Um, but yeah, that uh, I'm probably gonna fix it, and then uh, I really need to get rid of some chairs because uh, I have five noble chairs in this house. <laughs> uh, uh, my knees hurt thinking of saying like that. Well, I I sit I I sit in really weird positions in general. I'm uh. I, I like to cross both of my legs on top of each other and then sit like fully bent over so like both you know legs are, are up like you can mostly see them there and then because my legs don't then fit under my desk I then lean forward so I'm stretching my lower back which is probably a good thing because I'm sitting down all day <laughs> but you know for for typing or whatever um yeah uh, uh, and I remember me uh, whinging for years now about wanting a 1440p uh, ultra wide IPS. Uh, well, I just asked for a quote on uh, <laughs> the uh, an MIVV GP Pro exhaust for my bike, so that's going to be over 800 euros. <laughs> Oof. Also, don't you need a remap for the bike to, to make use of that exhaust? Um, that's the thing, whether, why would they produce the cables if it was such an issue as, uh, as long as there is enough power for the system and extra headroom, I don't think there would be an issue. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I don't either. I know that the, uh, was it the 20 and then especially the 30 and then also like the really high end 40 series, like the 490, um, have a problem with, uh, like transient power spikes where, uh, if you just try and, like, while the card when normally running might draw, I don't know, three, four, five hundred watts, um, and then, you know, the rest of the systems, maybe 100, 150 more, whatever, uh, it is, you know, if you, if you spec a 750 watt power supply, what happens is when the card first boots up, um, it's, uh, has uh, a rather big inrush spike of current, um, which is kind of dumb because most devices have uh, inrush limiting uh, capacitors. For this is ah, brain's fried. Um, inrush limiting resistor because it's the capacitors that fill up. There we go. Took me a second. Anyway, um, and so uh, that they. You know, they, they, they spill up, uh, fill up very quickly, but that draws a whole lot of current, but only for a short spike. Most power supplies can handle that sort of transient super high spike, but especially on the larger cards, that spike tends to exceed the those uh, over power protection or over current protection limits, and then the power supply shuts off. So you need to like super over spec to not only handle the regular load, but also the transient spikes. With that said, for a 7800X 3D, which I think is what, 170 watts or something at most, although it's the 8 core, not the 12 or the 16, so it might be less. Anyway, um, well under 200 watts compared to Intel's 250 to whatever. Uh, that's, you know, fine. Uh, and then the 4080 is going to be what, 300 or so watts? 150? 400 at most? Um, so you're looking at, at most, like 500 watts of constant draw if you were loading both at the same time. Uh, and so you're you're doubling that capacity by getting a thousand watts. So yeah, I would, I would call that fine. Uh, <laughs> PC Gamer Chair Yoga. <laughs> uh, I have two Secret Lab chairs and a Herman Miller. Nice. I can't afford a Herman Miller. <laughs> uh, 
Not uh, really necessary. You do need a cat catalytic converter, so total is 800 ish, still cheaper than a Krapovich or a Leo Vince. Nice. Fair play. Uh, any news on potential car reviews lined up for that, Will? Um, car reviews, not. Uh, specifically, I do. <laughs> there are many repairs that I need to do on my mine and my wife's cars um, uh, that I've been putting off. Actually, I uh, I replaced a, uh, a catalytic converter for a, a uh, friend and colleague of my wife's um, who had their Prius's catalytic converter stolen. Um, so I replaced. They, they, they bought some replacement parts and I, I fitted them uh, for them. Um, but uh, I, I didn't really feel right uh, or have the time or energy or effort to be able to film any of that. So I'm afraid you won't get a video on how to replace the catalyst converter on a uh, 2012 Prius. Um, but the good news is that... Uh, I am going to the SMMT day uh, on the 24th of May. Um, I wonder if they've actually set up the event page yet. Uh, because if they have, then I can tell you what some of the cars are going to be there. Uh, SMMT. No, no, it's not available yet. Okay, cool. Uh, but yeah, so that um that's like 25th of may or 24th 25th whatever the thursday is um so i uh obviously i'm going to that uh and on you normally get at least one if not two videos on that and it gives me a chance to uh be face to face with the pr people and uh pester them for car loans so uh, i'm hoping to be a bit more um vigilant on, on uh, asking and offering for, for that. So, um, yeah, hopefully, uh, one, you'll get some new cars for me to, uh, you know, show off. And two, uh, there's a lot more chance of me actually getting some cars into review. It's quite nice. Uh, my rule for PSUs is get one with uh, double the max total, uh, total requirements, just like car batteries, two CC, CCAs per CID. I know what CCAs is. Oh, Grand Camps. CID. Not sure. Um, but yeah, fair. Um, cars' batteries are um, a bit of a uh, an annoyance, <laughs> uh, especially for me with a VAG car. Oh, cubic inch displacement, right? The um, I genuinely don't know what the cubic inch displacement of my 3 litre or my 2.993 cubic centimetre. Um, I'm sure I could do the conversion, but uh, yeah. I get what's recommended. Um, because I have a VAG car, specifically an Audi S4, um, it uh, requires me to code the battery. Uh, and you have to get the ones with a special sticker on it. I didn't, so it's fun trying to recode the battery with not special sticker. Um, and technically one that doesn't actually have the exact same uh, parameters, but um, yeah. Uh, there's 61 cubic inches per liter. Hundred and eighty-ish, hundred eighty-three. Give or take. Uh, so I have like four times uh, the uh, your, your your recommendation there. Because I think mine is eight sixty, and by that calculate, it's almost three times. Um, yeah. Uh, hello, Luca. You would know about the coded batteries <laughs> with your S one. Um, and you're in a, a DJ, I, I can't not make the joke, have you, have you tried the mustard? <laughs> um, uh, have you seen some of the methods uh, people have 
uh, been doing to prevent their cats being stolen. I've seen some right bobby dazzlers, including hot glue, vandal paint, and more. I have. It's a lot more of a problem in America, both uh, because of the, the economic state and because pretty much everyone in America seems to drive a pickup truck, uh, which uh, has all of the ground clearance in the world, so you can just crawl under the car, cut the thing off, and then skedaddle out of there. Um, whereas, like, to steal uh, conventional cars, you need to jack the things up and then get at them. And also, especially with more modern cars, like, for example, with my S4, uh, for, for, for maximum efficiency and packaging constraints, my catalytic converters are mounted uh, basically immediately after the uh, intake man, uh, the uh, exhaust manifold. Like, uh, you have the collectors. Uh, down into three pipes down into one and then there's a catalytic, catalytic converter right there so to steal mine you basically have to drop the engine <laughs> um, I can barely touch them when I jack up the car let alone cut them out so yeah whereas the Prius um, it's like super far down like it's basically hanging out straight at the bottom and you just take two bolts out cut one cut the pipe once and then off you go um yeah it's it's really common for the cat to be in the engine bay like right directly attached to the the header here um or with a lot of uh, european vehicles let's say and even uh, japanese vehicles um, is it worth getting lithium uh, battery for a vehicle? The stock one on the bike seems a bit weak, but I'm a bit apprehensive of putting lithium batteries near a hot engine. Um, uh, Commander Classified recommends a, a AGM battery. So uh, AGM batteries are better. I mean, that's what my car uses anyway. Uh, obviously, uh, I assume you're talking about your bike, um, because that's what you mentioned. Duh. Uh, for a bike, uh, it depends where the, the battery is mounted, but uh, as a general rule, they decrease the weight often quite up high. They're normally, you know, by the seat, uh, like just below the seat, which is where mine is, uh, which is one of the highest points on the bike. And uh, they obviously reduce the weight in general. They also are a lot less maintenance with uh, lead acid batteries, AGMs, gels, or blooded lead acid. They are uh, a bit more high maintenance in the sense that you have to keep them charged. If they drop below 50% state of charge, the cells start deteriorating. Whereas lithium, as long as you don't charge it below freezing, uh, and what was the other one? Uh, you know, you don't like super overheat it like mad. Um, it's, it's a lot more resilient to that. Uh, there are a couple of like depending on like weather conditions and stuff um with lithium you generally need to let them warm up first so you might need to like turn on your headlights for 30 seconds or a minute before you go to start the bike just to warm up the battery get some current flowing uh whereas with lead acid you might not need to do that i mean it's still probably a good idea but yeah uh and Generally speaking, uh, lithium, especially lithium, lithium ion, generally better lifespan too. You generally, they, they don't deteriorate as uh, both readily and uh, they don't self-discharge as readily or, uh, what you call it? Um, watch the Fortnite video uh, on the battery types. Um, uh, AGM is probably the best, uh, like, bang for buck and, uh, price disparity uh, for overall performance uh, but yeah watch the, the video it's, it's a great video anyway recommend it even if you weren't really gonna buy one <laughs> the lithium ion charge uh, so well in the cold well so uh, as long as you don't charge below freezing uh, it's normally fine um, and part of the the charging uh, will partially heat the battery anyway and so you know if it's three or four degrees or something you can still charge it uh especially if it's if you're just trickle charging it to keep it you know uh alive and well um 
So, yeah. It's normally fine. Once it's, like, negatives, especially if it's lithium iron phosphate, uh, it that's quite bad for it. Um, but... Yeah. Hello, Harry. How you doing? How's things? Um... Uh, and yeah, John, um, they should still be labeled AGM or whatever, um, but yeah. Uh, lithium iron phosphate seems to be the new Smexy, uh, according to half the home power wall vids that keep popping up on YouTube. Um, yes, I mean, that's what my, <laughs> that's what my home power wall is made of. Uh, no, it's the the reason that lithium iron phosphate is uh, so popular, especially for that sort of home power wall, solar, uh, ba like home battery bank, is uh, one, it's a lot safer. It uh, You can like riddle it with bullets, you can stab it, you can cut through it. It will not self-ignite, which is really good. Uh, it's also uh, mass produced in quantities suitable enough to be able to... Um, you know, use it in that sort of uh, case. It's not the most uh, power output dense. Like, it can't... Uh, it's not necessarily the best for electric cars. I think that's NMC cells are still the, the best for that. But um, it, it normally doesn't have the hardest uh, output current potential. But uh, it's normally very good on the energy density front. Um, the cells, the prismatic cells that uh, I have are uh, 280 amp hours for a cell that is, you know, that size uh, at, you know, 3.2 whatever volts. Uh, so, yeah. I think that's the majority of the things that I can think of. Um, but yeah. It is a pretty good choice for uh, non-mobile applications. Uh, electric cars don't like heavy rain. Seen a few in the hard shoulder on the M40s, Teslas and Porsches. Interesting. I wonder why. Everything's weather sealed. Ironically, they should... They shouldn't care about rain and whatever uh, less than a combustion engine because you can't flood an electric <laughs> electric more like you can with an internal combustion engine. And once you flood the internal combustion engine, that's le bad. Ba, 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 ba. Uh, what was the other one? Uh, I guess I, I need high capacity, lots of start and stops. Yeah, I mean, so the... AGM batteries do quite well with start stop uh, and like repeated large current draws for actually, you know, starting the engine. That's one of the reasons why uh, most cars that have start stop engines in particular uh, are almost always fitted with AGM batteries. It's normally a requirement uh, from, you know, whatever, BMW, uh, Mercedes, Audi, whoever, um, that if a car has start-stop, they fit it with an AGM battery. Um, so that's probably not a bad idea. A lot of the lithium batteries are smaller, like physically smaller, but they're also capacity smaller. They might claim, like, an equivalent amp power, uh, but that's normally because of their current output, not because of their actual capacity, which is real stiffler. Um, so yeah. Uh, <laughs> please do not riddle your batteries of bullets or stab them, especially if you're still in your Tesla. <laughs> well, the Teslas are using those NMC cells, so you really don't want to because they can self-combust. 
Uh, had a good chat with a manager from Nissan. He went uh, to a convention that outlined a huge interest in hybrid engines replacing full EV. Uh, EV rollout has been a major flop in the industry. So I think it depends on who you talk to, right? Because uh, hybrid engines, whether that's uh, hybrid from a uh, like Prius standpoint, where it's the electric motor can drive the car on its own and the internal combustion engine can drive the car on its own and the two can work together or the you know one can charge the other whatever um or whether you're talking about it from a bmw i3 with range extender type hybrid where uh it has uh or like was it mazda's new c30 or something i don't know um the one with the rotary engine in the front um where it's going to be uh You know, it, the electric vehicle part is the thing that drives the car. The internal combustion engine is purely just a generator. Arguably, that makes more sense because you then don't have the complication of two sets of, you know, driving axles uh, or uh, two sets of driving components. You know, you don't need a gearbox and drive shafts for the internal combustion engine, only to then have have to have some way of either disconnecting the internal combustion engine or uh you know whatever to have the the electric motors drive the car um with that said i i don't think that uh if you spoke to well obviously tesla obviously but you know people like uh polestar or uh even hyundai i don't think that they would think uh full evs have been a total flop I think it's the uh, manufacturers that have kind of dragged their heels on full EV uh, production that uh, would 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 tell you that, like Nissan, like they have the Leaf obviously, but they've also been very um, reluctant to electrify much of their fleet. I think they've got the Evnia or whatever horrific thing it is, um, but. Yeah. Uh, ba 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 ba. Uh, T panel. Um, yeah, I would agree with you. <laughs> There's a reason why I don't own an EV, <laughs> and the price <laughs> is it. <laughs> um, I think it's it's uh. It's partially chicken and egg, partially uh, the the kind of the dynamic of uh, the vehicle sort of changes with an EV because the, the reason the EV is an EV is so expensive is because of the battery pack, right? But the reason, like the, the benefit of having an EV from a, a cost perspective is that especially if you charge at home and especially if you have solar already, it's basically free for you to charge a car and you know free for you to drive or if you're just charging from home and you don't have solar it's still ridiculously cheaper than um what you call it uh you know uh, paying for, for petrol or diesel whatever um especially over the, your ownership of the car uh so the hypothetical argument is that while the upfront cost is more, the uh, lower cost of usage offsets that. However, um, with just how much more expensive they are, it is pretty hard to justify, um, especially on a personal level. You know, if it's like a company vehicle and it's the company that's um, making those decisions, then uh, you might, that might be, the, the maths might change slightly, but, um, yeah. The uh, Fiat 500e is five grand more than the Arbarth. Oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's quite a lot. Uh, the X-Trail is driven purely by motor as the battery is kept charged by the petrol engine. It's an interesting method. The range is 130 on the battery alone, uh, but it'll never need charging. Yeah, that's like I think the the uh, that style of hybrid, the uh, motor generator style, 
um, is, I think, arguably makes more sense than the, uh, what you call it? Uh, here we go, sitting in weird positions, breaking chairs again. <laughs> um, I had something to say. Gone now. Uh, that configuration's better, uh, and I think if you're going to get a, uh, hybrid vehicle, that would be the style I would prefer to get. It's toasty in here now. See, now it doesn't look so bad. Um, fast charging is very hit or miss in Australia unless it's a Tesla. If they opened up their fast charging to others, it'd be a lot better. I very much hope that they do. I know that they are uh, doing it slowly. <laughs> um, but, yeah. Is full EV a joke? I wouldn't uh, go so far as to say that, no. It is arguably much more efficient the uh economics and uh infrastructure aren't uh what i would call quite there yet to support uh you know ev everyone having a f uh, fully electric vehicle or a battery electric vehicle in particular but um it is you go from like at best about 30% efficiency for the fuel that you put in to about 80% efficiency, um, which is a pretty big deal. <laughs> uh, <laughs> my dad said I could use it. There's your license right there. <laughs> um, Forget EVs, if you want to save the planet, uh, apart from less fuel consumption, you statistically have a shorter lifespan, so I'm doing my part. <laughs> nice. I mean, the, the real answer is that we shouldn't be so bloody car dependent, but... Meh. Uh, <clears throat> the only compromise is that the efficiency isn't as good as a Prius hybrid gets 44 to 88 mpg rather than the hundreds the Prius could get. Still much more efficient than my current car. Well, yes and no. I mean, the the fact that it's an X Trail is part of the problem. Like a Prius is a, a much smaller, much more aerodynamic or aerodynamically efficient car uh, compared to an X Trail, um, which I could guarantee you is part of that problem. <laughs> and also, I assume that the Prius's uh, rating is based on the fact that it's a plug-in hybrid now. Um, and therefore is probably counting a lot, like counting however many kilowatts of battery that you've charged from the wall first <laughs> um, to get the hundreds sort of rating. <laughs> it's got the air of a slab of butter, or me if I was running as fast as I could. <laughs> <laughs> Accurate. <laughs> Thank you, chat, for keeping up. <clears throat> Although, saying that, the, the new Prius model actually doesn't look half bad. Like, physically look, like, aesthetically look. Um, they've definitely given it a, uh, a bit of a once-over. I would really like to EV convert some cars, um, but it's, uh, even then it's still, what I would say is not economically viable. Like, of course it would be, it would be great content, and trust me, I'd be making content about it. 
but uh, I'm not in a position where I can go and spend 10 grand on motors and batteries and things just to EV convert something. Well, uh, to, to counter your point, John, on uh, people in government pushing EVs too early, wouldn't it be better to invest heavily in EV and battery research first for a couple of decades and then make them? Well, the, the, like, for the vast majority of people, the vast majority of people don't drive hundreds of miles every single day, right? Like, the vast majority of people commute, I think, something like 30 or so miles in the UK on average. Uh, so even if you were to double that for 60 for round trip, worst case, worst case average, uh, almost every EV, even the Honda E and the Renault Zoe can do those trips. Admittedly, especially in winter, that gets a bit more sketchy and <laughs> I probably wouldn't want to in those sorts of cars, but, uh, you know, for, for, for almost every average like daily use of your car for the vast majority of people the batteries can already supply enough range the motors are already perfectly adequate anyway um and as long as you can charge it at home or at work or you know like your local supermarket if there's a fast enough charger there whatever um we're already kind of there the only problem is mostly just the cost of of purchasing one is way too high right now to to justify that um and also it's a bit of a chicken and egg because uh investing heavily in into ev and battery research well, one we're already kind of doing that but two the people who are investing in the ev batteries and research are the car companies who are currently making evs and the way that they you know improve those uh, options is to make the cars, sell some of them, and then you know use the profits from those to uh, improve things and to to uh, create the infrastructure required to switch over. Um, so I, I I think that it's uh, uh, we're sort we're on a decent path, is what I would argue. Um. <laughs> if electric was as good as they made it out to be, they'd invented electric 2.0 by now. Case closed. I know it's like PC 2.0. When's that coming out? <laughs> um, an EV would cover my use, and the occasion it doesn't, I could hire a real car. Uh, I just can't charge one at home. Yeah, that's the big problem for a lot of people. Like, if, if I swapped my car, I could probably charge at home, but... Um, it I also specifically picked a house with any amount of on off street parking. Um and even then it's still not actually properly off street parking. <laughs> See you Luca, enjoy. Uh Ba, 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 ba. Uh, EV works well, uh, works well for smaller cars. Larger cars suffer from uh, any form of electric power when it comes to range, efficiency, aerodynamics. Uh, again, it depends on the vehicle. Like as much as I kind of detest the the, the man and the companies, um, uh, which call it uh, features like being able to remotely steal your car. Uh, <laughs> And watch all the security tapes. Uh, uh, Tesla Model 3, you know, the long range one, but not the dual motor or whatever, uh, I think can do more range than my S4 can. Admittedly, you would have to stop for longer to charge it, but I mean, realistically, if you're gonna do 250, 300 miles, whatever, uh, I know I'm gonna stop probably a couple of times on, uh, on that journey and you know you just uh, you, you you fast charge it for the 20 minutes that you're at the, the services and you've got another 100 miles 
Um, but, 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 uh, agree, but while advertising the pollution cost, uh, while advertising the pollution cost of producing the batteries and EV components is uh, conveniently not mentioned, just the direct emissions, not to mention uh, labor, mining, and resources. Um, so yes, obviously there uh, it is. The, the, the companies will, will uh, uh, do their best to only show you the positives. That's how marketing works. Um, but, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the, nope, brain's gone. I'll have something for you in five to seven business days. <laughs> Uh, let's see. They're not a uh, magic bullet by any stretch of the imagination, and uh, I, I very much agree that we should uh, realistically be prioritizing uh, much more efficient modes of transit uh, rather than cars, uh, and therefore you kind of eliminate the uh, a lot of the problems just outright from from all of the vehicles uh but uh in the society in which we live even when you include the uh production emissions uh the payoff period between even just owning your existing car and uh buying a new electric like battery electric vehicle the payoff is something like five to ten years somewhere in there um which considering that you know most electric vehicles should be lasting at least that if not longer um it is it ends up being a net positive uh but yeah not perfect uh just saying that current ice efficiency and taxes might have uh, less environmental impact than EVs, uh, but they advertise outright as perfect. Oh no, the marketing is complete BS. Like, that's marketing. <laughs> um, but yeah. And yeah, um, Zig's right too. <clears throat> uh, Bryson, my GameStar T3 controller I bought from eBay around six weeks ago broke. Where do I stand on returns? Uh, depends very much on the returns policy, but it's normally 30 days. So you might be out of it. <laughs> uh, can you imagine our kids restoring a classic BMW i3 in about 20 years time? Doesn't have the same appeal as an old MG or Jag. Yeah, <laughs> I mean the nice thing is that there's there there is so little to uh, sort of go wrong essentially on elect on a, on an electric vehicle, um, but uh, yeah no I mean the 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 general trend towards mass manufacturing uh, on the whole means that uh, the individual items are a lot less inherently valuable. Um, Ryzen, it depends very much on uh, the seller because the seller sets, like assuming that you bought it used, if you bought it new, maybe, but then they'll probably just tell you to go to GameStar directly. Um, but yeah. Uh, Um, would one have to back pay all the missed monthly DLC payments to restore a car, future car working condition? Oh god, why is that so dystopian and so true? Oh no. Oh god. Uh. <laughs> Stick RGB on cards, RGB makes everything faster and better. <laughs> Electric Gamer Edition. <laughs> oh dear. 
uh, new. So in that case, you might have uh, better, uh, better, be better hopes with it. Um, so uh, I would request a return or whatever from eBay to see if they um, they'll accept it. If or message the seller and say it's broken. You know, you want to want to return it, want to RMA it, whatever, um, and then go from there. I'm downloading torrents to get old classic EVs running right again. <laughs> oh, god damn it. Can we just go back to riding horses? <laughs> now that's environmentally damaging. Also, can you, can you imagine the M25 if it was just full of people riding horses? <laughs> Oh, the streets would get stinky again. <laughs> Instead of at the wheel, at the hoof. <laughs> God damn it. I feel like at the reins is probably more more like at the wheel, you know, the, the wheel is the control, control harness. As opposed to the control harness on the horse, which is the reins. <laughs> Couldn't afford a horse, I'd be stuck with a donkey. <laughs> yeah, but then I'm, I'm at least so would everybody else in Grimsby. <laughs> also, did you like my Grimsby joke in whichever video that was? I can't remember which one it was now, but I made a Grimsby joke. <laughs> the M25 would be knee deep in poo. True. Which video was it? Does anyone remember me making a Grimsby joke in a video? It was relatively recent, I think. I don't remember. Maybe the Thousand Hours Monster one? I can't remember. <laughs> Getting a horse in for an MOT and it fails in the tread depth of its shoes. <laughs> Sorry, mate, but this is gonna need some new shoes. Aye. Look, look at how worn these are. This is so dangerous. Can you believe you're on the road like this? <laughs> uh, it was Titan Ruby, yeah. Back to penny farthings then. <laughs> yeah. Or a safety bicycle, perhaps. Oh, dear. Right, I think that's enough madness for today. <laughs> um, I will, uh, I think I'll, <laughs> I'll leave it there. Um, I, uh, I hope you have a, a wonderful week. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, as always, video tomorrow, which I can't remember what it is. Uh, video Monday on these, uh, these chairs and uh, my experiences with them. And uh, yeah. I hope you stay safe, have a good week, and I'll catch you all next Thursday. Bye, guys.